Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope you're doing awesome. Today, we have something a little different to show you on the bench. No, it's not a computer. Surprise! <laughs> However, it is branded by a computer manufacturer. So you know what? We have lots to cover today. Let's get right to it. Before the world of cell phones and all the wonderful flip phones and peanut phones and phones you had to sit there and send a bunch of different uh, buttons to be able to send one text, <laughs> oh, those were the days, we had the PDA, the Personal Digital Assistant. This PDA on the bench today is the IBM WorkPad. The WorkPad, which is manufactured by 3Com Palm. So back in 1997, when this was manufactured, 3Com owned Palm. And so our first Palm Pilot, I believe, came out in 1996. I had a Palm Pilot, which I believe was 1998, 1999, which was the Palm 3XE was the one I had. But today we have the IBM WorkPad. So IBM obviously went and saw Palm and said, hey, I want to manufacturer or brand one of your devices under the IBM moniker and call it a work pad. Obviously we have think bad, think centers, work bad, it all fits in their nomenclature. So this device itself is pretty awesome that I was able to find this at a thrift store. And you know, whenever I see something branded by IBM, definitely have to have it in the collection. Let's go over the actual, what kind of came with it. So we have this leatherette type case, which is pretty awesome. That says work pad right here, which is actually engraved right into the actual leather itself, which is pretty awesome. And you know what? That's the limit of the protection that I have for this device. You know, the Palm Pilot that I had at the time had an actual cover with hinges on the side here that would flip over and protect this screen. This is what you have. This is what you get. So the actual device itself, so it says IBM WorkPad, and we have our capacitive screen on here that we use for the stylus that's here. And this only does come with the one stylus. That's all it did. So lucky to have that. And then we have our different home buttons. So we have our, what looks like our power, our backlight button, looks like a calendar, our phone. So probably our contacts, our up and down arrows, I believe our to-do list and our notepad. So those are kind of quick keys to do different things. Plus on the screen, kind of embedded into the actual LCD, we have, again, applications, menu, calculator, and find. So we're gonna go over that in a few minutes. On the side here, we have a volume up and down button or it's a contrast up and down button. I'm not exactly sure. I haven't powered this up yet to be quite honest with you. So we're gonna go over that in a minute. On the back, we have what looks like a battery compartment, which we are going to have to put batteries in it in a few moments. And then we also have our graffiti legend. So graffiti was the actual language that they had used or had created to allow you to be able to write. So you take your stylus here and you would actually mimic, take that out there, you would actually mimic these movements. It tells you how to definitely do the letters on the screen. So if you wanted to write in um, a node or a calendar entry or something like that, you would just go on this and you would select the actual things that you need to be able to write. So I think that's pretty, pretty darn cool. We have a reset button here. So you obviously you'd use this uh, stylus, push in on that and it would reset your data. On the bottom, we have a proprietary connector that's here. The one that I had actually had a door that went up and down here, which would actually protect the connector itself. This is not the case on this particular unit. Okay, that is the work pad. I'm just going to leave that out for a moment. Then the other thing, as I mentioned, because it does have the proprietary connection, you would require in order to transfer data or synchronize is what they called sync data between your PDA and your laptop was the cradle or the dock or the sync station, whatever you want to call it. That's what the device was. So it's allowed you to slide your device in just like this 
and use this hot button here that was the synchronize button and that's again the palm symbol there that you would press you would say to the system and the pda i want to synchronize my data everything that i did on the road today i was out in the road i was taking a bunch of notes and doing a bunch of things and all that i added 10 more contacts to my friends list or my contact list and i pop this in here and i want all that to go to my computer well you push that button and it would automatically sync and you could choose what to sync. And we're going to go over that as well. So the other bonus that came with this, of course, is the software. And it's awesome having the original software with this. Yes, this is available online, but it's always great to have it as part of the collection as a complete set. The only thing I wish I had was the box and the manuals and all that. But uh, again, most of that's online that you can get. So I do have access to that reference. So the CD itself says the desktop software for the IBM. So we have WorkPad. Contents produced by Palm Computing Inc., a subsidiary of 3Com Corporation. So 3Com at this stage, I don't believe owned, but US Robotics was something that 3Com had purchased later in life. And 3Com, uh, sorry, US Robotics manufactured modems and networking equipment. So uh, that's how I knew of the 3Com brand. I was a very heavy user of the US Robotics equipment. And so of course, 3Com came into the mix later as you bought modems. So this is copyright 1997, 3Com Corporation, all subsidiaries, all rights reserved. And so this is the actual software for that. And noting 1997, 97 for the unit, I thought it appropriate in order to be able to actually showcase this beautiful device is the IBM ThinkPad 380XD. <laughs> Why not have an IBM with the IBM synchronizing? Going to do that. And this IBM came out in 97 as well. And I have Windows 98 installed on this machine. And it does have the required serial port connection that we require for synchronization. Okay, so let me get this all set up. Let me get the computer powered up and we'll go from there. Okay, and we're back with the setup here. We have our beautiful IBM 3D XD computer all ready to go. And we have our IBM WorkPad here. I didn't plug in the serial connection just yet because I want to get the computer all fired up and get the WorkPad software installed on the system. So let's go ahead and turn on this beautiful machine. ThinkPad, meet WorkPad. <laughs> All right, so we'll log into the computer here. The Windows 98 startup sound. Okay, now that we have the desktop all loaded up here, we're gonna open up the CD-ROM drive. And that's one of the nice things about the 380XD. It had a dual CD-ROM and floppy drive built in. Okay, I'm gonna pop this CD in and let it install. Okay, we're gonna click on setup for the install. And the setup is loading and guide you through the rest of this setup. Installing desktop software for the IBM WorkPad. Welcome to the WorkPad desktop setup program. The program will install WorkPad desktop to your computer. So WorkPad desktop, I believe, is the same as Palm desktop. I believe that's what they called it. It's recommended that you close everything. Yep, absolutely. We've done that. Hit next. So our username is going to be the retro recall, and we'll hit enter. So it's asking me what I want to install here. So what we're going to install is the WorkPad desktop program. Word macros, Excel macros, expense, and mail. So basically everything. And we'll hit next. And work to pad desktop, we'll hit next again. The following dialog, you will select the serial port for hot sync. So remember I said the hot sync was to the cradle. So it's gonna ask about what serial port. Setup can detect the status of your serial ports automatically. Please remove your work pad from the cradle. Okay. Do you want setup to automatically detect your serial ports? We have it plugged in the back and we're going to click on yes. Do you want to automatically detect your serial ports? So we have COM1 available, which is what that is. We'll hit OK. Specific instructions for ThinkPad users. If you're not a ThinkPad user, you may click on the OK button now. If you install desktop software for the WorkPad onto an IBM ThinkPad laptop PC, you may have to enable a serial port before you can hot sync with your WorkPad device. If your laptop has an infrared port, you can first disable the infrared port before enabling the COM port. 
So I did see that COM port four was in use, probably because the infrared is utilizing the communication port, and then it refers to the documentation on how to be able to do that. So hit OK, and we can do that, adjust that later. Do you want to review the README now? Nope, we are good. Setup is complete. You may run the install program by double clicking on the program icon. OK. So it looks like we have the software installed now on the uh, IBM ThinkPad. And let's see, do we have an icon yet? We don't. Is it under Start Menu? Actually, you know what? It's going to be under this program group that I created. Okay, good old Windows 98. Some days I forget on how to use it, which is kind of funny. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to remove the battery compartment from the back, and we're going to install two batteries in the back of this unit because we are going to get this set up. Okay, so I had to close the laptop screen here because it was actually trying to, the camera's focusing on the laptop screen, not the PDA, and it's even having a hard time right now. And the way I have it positioned right now is because it's the least kind of glare on this screen. That's the unfortunate thing about trying to film, you know, layers like this, because this is a very um, reflective screen that's on here. You can see when I do that with the lighting and everything. It's also the camera's picking up that layer, so it's trying to focus in on that. So we have the IBM WorkPad here. I'm going to turn the power button onto it, and we have our different applications we have on here. We have the address book, calculator, date book, expense, giraffe, hot sink, mail, memo pad, memory, prefs, so imagine preferences, security, and to-do list. Then we have a time here of 7.44 p.m. and battery life. So this does take two AAA batteries to be able to utilize the system. So there's different versions of Palm OS that were available. And the nice thing about the sync cable is that you could actually upgrade these as well. I know I did over the years. So we have address here. So we'll click on address. So here you can go in and uh, add new. You can go ahead and look up. So if you had multiple different addresses in here. So it comes pre-populated with Palm Pilot accessories, technical support, uh, WorkPad accessories. I just entered one RE. I was just playing with it here a minute ago because in order for us to type this in or to do it, you have to use what we call the graffiti type style where when you're entering it in and the hints are on the back here. So it says graffiti alphabet. So it tells you all the different ways, as I mentioned earlier, to be able to type the letters out or, or have the letters, uh, write the letters out. So what we're gonna do now is click back on applications and take a look around here. So we have calculator here. So we have the good old calculator, one plus one equals two. Oh my goodness. Pretty awesome to be able to have that on, you know, on your portable. We take that for advantage today on your cell phone, but again, having it as part of your everyday was pretty awesome. We have date book here. So this is kind of like your calendar. So you go in, you can look at the whole month, you can look at the week and you can look out oh, there the week and then you can look at the day. And if you have issues pushing some of these buttons, you could actually go in and do your preferences and recalibrate your stylus to the to the actual surface because it is um, a digitizer on here. So you have to go around and train it for what you're trying to do here. OK, so then you can go into your specific day you can click on go to. And if I want to go to a certain date because I have something I, I plan for this day, I have my entire day calendar here. And these are very, very handy to be able to have your calendar on here as you were traveling, your date book, your, um, your, uh, your contacts, and all of your different applications and tools. And there was a whole bunch of Palm OS software available that you could download and synchronize to the device using the Cradle. Okay, so I'm going to go back to applications here. And we have expenses. What's in our expenses? So you're going to click on new expense, expense type. Um, let's go new expense type is going to be breakfast. You know, I'm on the road, I'm traveling. I just ate breakfast. You know, I'm going to click on this and we're going to go. It was $4. So I can actually go ahead and bring up the actual keyboard if I want to enter it. So I'm going to put four period zero zero. So that's $4. I'm going to click on done. And that was my expense. I'm going to click on show and I'm going to sort by date. I can do distance of miles, currency I can do. I'm just going to hit, um, hit uh, new on that. So I already entered one expense and I'm going to move, move my date. Uh, yeah, we had entertainment. We went and uh, saw a movie there for whatever reason. So I click on that itself and I'm going to go to the keyboard. 
No, click on it and go to the keyboard. And I'm going to go, the movies cost us $45 uh, for uh, five of us because we're talking back in the late 90s. <laughs> uh my goodness how prices have changed and there we go and, and oh maybe my date was wrong maybe they actually went on the 26th that time for the entertainment so what it does is automatically sorts it by date so that's pretty cool so i'm going to click on done there we're all good to go now you can actually do a sort here where it says all you can do different uh categories here so you know where did you travel to and things like that so that's uh, pretty awesome Okay, we're gonna go back to applications there. I like how it automatically gives you the uh, calculator as one of the options right up front. So you don't have to go and hunt for the application. Going back to applications again. So we have giraffe. So giraffe is to score, write the graffiti strokes of, of the characters as they drop from the top of the screen. So basically you're gonna have words that are dropping from the top of the screen and are gonna come down and it's your, your job to sit here and make sure that you write it all in right here on the pad. And I'm gonna be terrible at this because I, there's S, O, oh, sure they give me easy ones first. Uh, R, oh, I'm getting it right so far, C, U. <laughs> oh, so I'm not that bad, am I? Uh, oh, okay, so you can't leave and I can't use the keyboard either. <laughs> That's cheating. So I don't know what K is here. So if I look at the back, I look at K, it's just this little squiggly line like this. So I'll go like, okay, there we go. See, I learned it. And then, so that's what it does. It teaches you how to use the graffiti keyboard. And A is like that, I believe. There we go. Perfect. And we're done now. End game. Yeah, new high score of eight initials. We'll put uh, R, R. There we go. Done. There we go. Pretty awesome, I think. Okay. So that just teaches you how to use the actual graffiti itself and be able to move forward with that. Okay, click on applications. So we're gonna go to just local sync and it's trying to connect with the desktop right now. We're gonna hit cancel on this. You can also have the option to go into your modem setup if you want to. So you can actually synchronize this over a modem. These had the ability to have an external modem attached to a phone line, which would this would sit into or connect to. And so you can actually communicate and synchronize with your home base, basically utilizing a modem, which I think is pretty darn cool. Click on done, uh, applications, and mail. So yes, you had mail. So this, even though this wasn't online as itself, you could synchronize your email using Microsoft Outlook synchronization or a different application, depending on what integrations it had to your PDA. And then on top of that, you also have the ability to utilize the modem to do synchronizing as well over the over the internet or over the uh, dial-up uh, modem. So that would again, give you that option, which I think is again, pretty cool when you think about back in the day. Then you have memo pad, so entering text into your work pad, work pad basics. So these are different memo lists. So you click on it and it should give me the option. Yeah, so I can write actual memos. So I'm sitting there and I'm on a plane or something or I'm on a bus and I need to write a memo. So I'm gonna go, either to my keyboard and do a whole memo to myself and type up a whole different document, or I'm going to use the graffiti keyboard itself if I wanna make the different letters, or these also have the ability to plug into an actual flip out keyboard, but that's for a coverage for another day. But these definitely supported an external keyboard so you can actually put it up and type as if you were on a, a laptop. Okay, get done, go back to applications. So memory, it shows you how much memory is currently in use. So this has 960K, so one megabyte of memory. So the address book and date book and shows you all the different memory it is using for the application. So you can go in and click on delete apps if you want, or you can go in and see what else we have here. Now, at, this becomes very important. So this is the one megabyte model. They had different expansions as well available for this, but it's very important to watch for this because as you, as you added applications, it used kilobits of memory, kilobytes, I should say, of memory that you'd have to keep an eye on to make sure they had that. So it shows here system version 2.0.3 Pro is what's currently installed on the IBM WorkPad. And of course, we would have to install different software as well. Okay, click on applications and we go to preferences. So we saw preferences at the beginning here. So at our date, our time, uh, auto off after a certain amount of time, system sound, alarm sound, and game sound are all enabled. Okay, and we have security. So then here you can actually go in and uh, you can hide different records, you can do different password settings, 
and then our to-do list. So, hey, I want to register my IBM WorkPad on the website. So it's thank, thank goodness it's telling me outside the box to do that. But you can click on new and it's a new task. And when you're done, uh, hit uh, done there. I can put a little box there, like a little check mark in the box because now I'm done. I think this is so awesome. I think it's so cool. It brings me back so many memories. Now, keep in mind, this is an older version of Palm OS than I'm used to. It definitely, uh, definitely brings back good memories. So again, as I mentioned earlier, we, I mean, we have our find here if I want to find anything on the actual page. But here we have the hotkeys down below here. So we also have the calendar here. We have our address book, so our, our what we need there. And we can go up and down using the up and down buttons here. Then we have our to-do list that we saw here a moment ago. And then we also have our memo list. So these are just hotkeys that allow you to uh, access that. So now that I've made those changes, I added some stuff to my memo list. I went in and added, oh, let's calculator. I went in and added things to my date book there. Uh, let's go at two o'clock, say, um, hello, H-E-L-L-O. There we go. And I'm getting better and better as I use this as I go. Sort of with the glare there, guys. Again, it's just very difficult to have this with the lighting and everything I have going on here. I'm going to click on, that's good. We know that's in there now. Click on applications again. So now I'm back on the home screen. So now I'm done. Okay, so I have the machine all up and running here and I come home from a long flight. I've been working on my PDA the entire time. The laptop's been inside my laptop bag, but I have my new memos and I have a couple of brand new business contacts now that I want to get all synced up to my laptop. I hit the power button, turn it on. And I hit the synchronize button here. Let me go back. Uh, where is it here? Hot sync connected with the desktop. So it's identifying the user. So it comes up here and prompts you automatically on the screen. So it says the retro recall. We'll hit OK. And it says determining workpad configuration, the retro recall. So it's doing a synchronization right now. You can see this here. It says synchronizing update 2.0.4. And then it shows the button here is kind of flashing. Now it's going through address book, to do list. Memo pad, expenses, work pad, ex databases, and now it says hot sync complete. You now need to reset your work pad by tapping the button below. So we'll click on reset. And because it's probably updating the software on the unit, so now it says welcome to the work pad. We're back up here again. But now the memo pad have increased in space, if you notice over here. So now when I go into the actual WorkPad desktop, because remember we went in and we added a contact and we added some other uh, things. So there's our date. So we had on the 27th, which was today, there's our calendar entry of hello. That's pretty awesome. Now, when I click on address book, we should have the same idea. So the RE is what I had in there. That's been synchronized. And under our to do, we had to register your IBM WorkPad, but I put a check mark in there this time. So it definitely synchronized everything back and forth. That's easily, literally as easy as you can do it. And then again, this is our garbage memo that we made just because I typed a bunch of characters. But again, it synchronized everything to the PDA. And I think this is absolutely awesome. And then, of course, can't forget our expenses. So I went ahead and clicked on expenses and it loads up Excel automatically. And it says here, expense report. All, so we, we want all of our expense report. We're going to click on create the expense report. And there we are. It automatically created an expense report for me based on my information that I entered here. And so this, again, this is just a sample here. And, you know, I think this is pretty darn cool that you're able to do this and have the data synced over for what it is. You can imagine how powerful that would have been back in the day to be able to pull the data over if you're traveling or on the road or as you're going. All of these things are now what we take for granted in our <laughs> our phones today. It's just absolutely crazy. Okay, so that's all done. So we've shown that, you know, this can be pretty powerful. We're able to do all that. And the same thing with, you know, different types of games. So you can actually download games to this and what have you and, and upload them to the, or synchronize, I should say, to the actual unit itself. So many options you could do with this and you can import different files, export different files. You can actually print everything right from here. You can open an archive, you can revert back. So you can actually save these in chunks in the database and actually sync back if you ever lost your data. And that's what I referred to earlier when I was saying that in the event that you lost power to this, because it runs on the batteries in the background, it'll last forever. No, I shouldn't say last forever, but it lasts a long time. And essentially, once you do that, you're able to, if it accidentally runs out of power, 
you can actually go in and tell it to resync back to the PDA once the software has been all set back up again on the unit. But I think this is an absolutely amazing setup to be able to take this, add your devices, add your calendar. You're on the road. You can play games on the unit. I think it's just absolutely cool to be able to do all this. And, you know, thinking back, this, you know, this came out in 97. This was the technology back then. You know, I, on mine, I installed, because I love Star Trek, I installed a Star Trek game on here. I used to play quite a bit of games on here. You could put on Minesweeper and, you know, Hangman and a whole bunch of different games. And all these were available online, and I believe they're all on archive.org now. So in the event that I'm going to do some more exploring with this unit, I'm going to go online and get some from archive.org, put them on here and synchronize them. And it would be totally cool to use this. You know, even, uh, you know, sitting around just playing some games on it. I think it's pretty darn cool. So, yeah, that's it. I'm going to stop today's video on that just to show everybody a little bit of a blast from the past with the IBM WorkPad. Again, something that we take for granted that was added into our cell phone today. We just use this every single day and not think about the different items that contributed to what we have today and that what we use today to make our lives that much easier. That said, if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. Hit the bell icon. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Let me know, comment down below. You know, did you own an IBM WorkPad? Did you have a Palm Pilot? What one did you have? What experiences did you have with it? I really love all the comments, love the interaction on the channel, and I respond to every one of them. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.